Hi, betting experts. On Saturday the 2nd of November, nine televised races on ITV on Saturday. Good ground, basically, at both tracks. Perhaps a little bit of cut in it at Weatherby, but Ascot, perfect ground conditions. I think a bit of watering might be taking place. We start off with our betting expert daily nap. This goes in the 3.15 at Ascot. It's a two-mile handicap hurdle, and I think fiercely proud is worth another chance. Now, he was sent off a very heavily back favourite last weekend, but bolted leaving the uh, stables, getting onto the track, did a lap of the track, I think, virtually, before his jockey could get hold of him, and he was withdrawn, understandably. He remains a handicapper with loads of potential this season. I think his mark underestimates him on the pick of his novice form, which was pretty useful. And I think the key here is this is a real test of speed. The hurdles track at Ascot is pretty sharp, and on decent ground round here, I think he'll be pulling all over them. Hopefully he'll settle off a strong pace in this big field and pick them off late. Ben Jones has been booked. Um, he'll be looking to get him dropped out, drop the bridle, and quick and clear late on. I think a price around four or five to one is more than fair. He's an exciting horse to follow. Our betting expert value angle selection goes in the 130 at Ascot. It's a novice chase over two miles and three furlongs, and I'm sticking with Ben Pauling and Ben Jones here with leader in the park. Now, this one only had four runs over hurdles last season, but ran to a pretty useful level. And I like the fact that he was a winning pointer on his only run in that spear at Tallow back in February 2023. All of Pauling's horses want good ground. He's bound to be really well schooled ahead of this chasing debut and the yard has hit form in the last fortnight with a couple of winners and numerous horses running well. The remaining seven races on ITV on Saturday, we'll do them in time order, starting at Weatherby with a 150, a mare's hurdle over two miles and I like take no chances here from the Dan Skelton yard. Now Dan is in flying form at the minute, quite incredible. The last fortnight he's had 15 winners at a 27% strike rate Take no chances, he's fit for a cracking effort at Chepstow in a handicap, and I think that might just count for plenty round here. I think she'll need a positive ride. She's going to stay further than two miles in time. She was finishing strongly at a big price at Chepstow, and I wouldn't be surprised if Harry didn't seize the initiatives from the stalls here and make all the running. Over to Ascot for the 205, a handicap chase over two mile one. I like the top one here, Master Chewy. Nigel Twist and Davis, another red hot yard flying along. This one's bound to be primed with the yard in terrific form and the good ground will be ideal under Tom Bellamy. He is a horse who can make a mistake. He often lost a winning chance last season with the odd error, but hopefully he'll have been extensively reschooled ahead of this chase uh, this seasonal reappearance with the excellent prize money on offer. Over to Weatherby for the 222, the Grade 2 Wensleydale hurdle over three miles. Well again. I'm going with Ben Pauling here, and I think Twig is overpriced at around 8 to 1. Now, he's a smart hurdler. He's won three from six so far. I think he's always looked like this three mile will suit him. Um, He ran really well over fences for most of last season in warm company. As I say, he's relatively low mileage over timber after just six career starts. He's another horse, I say, about Ben Pauling's. They all seem to want goodish ground, and I think Twig, who's a relentless galloper, could go really well here, an attractive price. Back to Ascot for a novice hurdle at 2.35 over two miles. Well, Tripoli Flyer as one of a lovely team of young novices that Fergal O'Brien's got to go into bat with this season. And his Lingfield bumper winner was very impressive last season and I suspect will have been well-schooled ahead of this hurdling debut. Fergal, not one to overface his horse, and I think it's significant that he starts Tripoli Flyer off here in a really valuable Saturday novice hurdle at Ascot. Over to Weatherby for the 2.58, the day's classy race, the best uh, chases on show here, over three miles in the Charlie Hall, a grade two, and I think Grey Dawning is tailor-made for this sort of race. He's a brilliant jumper, uh, comes from the Red Hot Skelton Yard. This flat galloping track will be absolutely ideal. He's bound to be 100% fit. I think he'll get a positive ride from Harry, and I suspect he'll take these out of their comfort zone from an early stage. He's got much more natural exuberance and pace than some of these sluggers, especially on the prevailing good ground. Staying at Weatherby for the 3.32, a handicap pedal. This is a red-hot race. There's three or four horses here, definitely ahead of their marks. None more so, in my opinion, than Goblet of Fire from the Nicky Henderson Yard, which has been slow to get going, but recent signs are more encouraging. And Goblet of Fire did not come off the bridle to win last week. Bowen's booked again. I think this speed test will be ideal. But as I say, you wouldn't want to be taking too short a price. It's quite a hot race. And finally, over to Ascot for the 3.45, 
A three mile handicap chase, well, Chianti Classico is a thoroughly likeable performer who's won three of his five career starts over fences so far. He's bound to be fully fit with the Kim Bailey yard in excellent form. I'm hoping Tom Bellaby will make all the running here and keep pulling out extra on the drying ground. Best of luck with all nine ITV races on Saturday, betting experts.